Okay, now we're going to tie the ends of these off so that they hold water. Uh, just crimping this over is enough to do it. Now we have to find a way to keep it crimped over. You can use a piece of wire, piece of string, you can wrap it, wrap it with duct tape, you could set it on the ground like this and hold it down with a forked stick. Um, we just happen to have some rope available, so we're going to use this. Done. Just finishing up, we have two 50 foot rows, uh, which would be 16 meters roughly, um, and that's as much as our 20 liter bucket kit can supply water to. Once again, this is a family setup. We'll show you a community size setup in just a while. Uh, okay, we just cut some uh, some measuring sticks so that we know how far apart we want to put our emitters. These are the same length. We're, I don't know, what is that, roughly 40 centimeters. We cut them out of a stick, which was this long. Okay, this is important. These are the two pieces we want. This is left over. Throw this away right now, or somebody's going to grab it, and they're going to start putting emitters this far apart, and we don't want that. Okay, Paul, go down one row. I'll go down another. Let's show you the emitters. Give, Give you an up close on this. This is the thing that makes everything happen. This is called a Toro DBK08 emitter, also known as an EM-2. And this is just so you can go online and Google this thing if you want to find it. We call it a flag emitter because it has this little little black thing that looks like a flag on the top. And the beauty of this is that when it plugs up, because you're going to be using some less than clean water sometimes, or dust may get in your bucket if you leave it uncovered, you pull this apart and it's immediately cleaned and you put it back together and it's immediately working again. So we're going to put about 50 of these in each of our rows because this bucket kit can power 100 of these. That's approximately three per meter. We're using, we're using the sticks because we want these things to be pretty much the same distance apart. Okay, so this is the point usually where pretty much everybody in the village gathers around and grabs a nail to poke a little hole in the pipe. Remember now we've got the pipes right over the top of the area that we put the compost in. So that where the plant goes, when the roots go down, it's going to find the compost. Poke a little hole. Push the emitter in. You heard a little snap when I pushed that in. That's how you know that it uh, it's all the way in. Are these our sticks? I threw the bad one away, hopefully. Okay, so what happens a lot of times, and I'm not sure I agree with this, but hey, if you want to do it, go ahead, is there'll be one person will go down and poke the holes, and then somebody else will come along behind and put the emitters in. As long as they have their stick, everything will be fine. 
I can't tell you how many times I've gone halfway down and found the holes only this far apart. This, this distance is crucial, as you'll see in a little while. When we start letting water out of the pipe, we don't want our emitters too far apart. So here's how we always know. Bang. That's where it goes. At the end of the pipe. Hear the snap? All right. We'll be back when we've when we're done putting the emitters in, make some water flow. <laughs> now Paul is being real careful not to push the nail all the way through both sides of the pipe. <laughs> it only goes in, just make a little hole. Don't push too hard, you'll have a leak. And now, you see if my stick says that one should be way out here, but obviously we've only, we've only amended the soil to here. Um, it's okay. I think we can get one more out of this. So I'm going to put another emitter right here. It takes quite a few passes to get all the weeds, but you're going to be happy that you did. Okay, so we'll tidy up our rows and then, uh, and then meet you back at the bucket and we'll fill it with water.